With regards to the leadership requirements model, how important is discipline as a soldier in their career and what does it mean to our profession? So discipline is part of your character uh, in the be, no do model. It's part of being. Character is extremely important. I would argue it's the most important thing that a person has. Uh, and to a soldier, it's what they have when they go home at the end of the day, whether they're in a uniform or not. I like to say that character is um, more important what you do than what you say, but character is uh, more important who you are even than what you do. So discipline specifically has to do with the character that you hold. The Army uh, asks us to do things a lot of times that maybe you inherently uh, haven't thought to be disciplined in. Uh, it is uh, easy for us to have our own internal drives and things that we care about, but the Army often asks us to take on ownership of things that we personally may not um, have made a decisive decision to be disciplined in. So it requires, it requires discipline requires uh, taking ownership. And I honestly didn't really know uh, as an officer what that really truly meant as a leader in an organization like this until I was a cadet at West Point. And um, to me, uh, learning about discipline was from our uh, knowledge book as a cadet uh, and a new cadet. And we, were, um, we had to memorize Schofield's definition of discipline. And I carry pieces of that with me today, and it's kind of, um, it's, it's led me to think of discipline in a different way uh, in the Army. So what it says is that the discipline which makes soldiers of a free country reliable in battle is not to be gained by harsh and tyrannical treatment. On the contrary, such treatment is far more likely to destroy than to make an army. And then it goes on to say that uh, it, is, it is possible to impart instruction and to give a command in such a way, in such a tone of voice, to inspire and in subordinate no feeling but the intense desire to obey. It also goes on to say that in order to do that, that the leader must inspire in the soldier um, regard for himself by building trust and rapport with that person. So really at the end of the day, a discipline has to do with empowering your subordinates and taking trust in uh, them to take ownership of the things that we've taught them to be able to do. So discipline really ends up being a hallmark of leadership and character uh, and down the line into being what the Army is requiring you to do on a daily basis. As a company commander, how critical is adaptability in leading troops? Adaptability is uh, an interesting way of saying being ready for anything, at any time, anywhere. Uh, for a company commander, uh, for me when I was in the 82nd, that was very, very true. Uh, now being a company commander in the old guard, it's a different kind of true. Um, the Army in general requires leaders uh, to not just follow checklists, but to be able to interpret the between the lines and ultimately deal with individuals. So our Army is made up of people and humans, and people are unpredictable, and people require leadership, good leadership, which is all different no matter what unit you're a part of. So as a leader, uh, as a company commander, I've had to change the way that uh, I lead in every organization that I have been in. Not the fundamental truths that I hold on to as like my philosophy, but the way that I lead, motivate, and encourage others to accomplish the mission. A lot of people struggle to define and understand humility, especially in the military profession. What are your thoughts on the role of humility while leading soldiers? Humility is something that I think that if you have to say that you're humble, then you probably aren't. So it's a quality of a human that I think has to be bestowed on you um, or interpreted, but it is something that you, you can honestly carry out. What I was told very early in my ex personal exposure to the Army, um, I was in JROTC in high school, and uh, our senior trainer, um, was describing to us leadership and the different types of leadership, uh, specifically in the Army. And he said something that stuck with me my entire career, uh, and it was that um, the difference between good and great leaders is humility. Uh, and, and being able to 
um, achieve without having to, um, to tell someone else that you're making those achievements, but to just buckle down uh, and to perform without your self-acknowledgement uh, to everyone else is absolutely necessary for teamwork. Uh, humility can be uh, defined in so many different ways, but I think that it's actually uh, the act of being humble which gets recognized that's so important for the team dynamic, which is the Army. How important is diversity in the future of our Army? I think diversity is important to the future of our Army because it forces character development in all of the ways that we're going to require our soldiers and leaders to adapt moving forward, and no matter what our conflict will look like. Um, I think that in character development, high moral character in general breeds trust, and trust is absolutely ne necessary when uh, there is a group of people performing a service for another group of people, like our military does. I think that the trust that um, society has in general in, into, um, into the military, the trust that military members have amongst each other is all bred through the exchange of our experiences and our growth. I, I would tell you that the, the strongest relationships that I've formed along my career have been um, sharing hardships with individuals, overcoming those hardships, and, and um, being able to rely on them through those hardships. What that requires is individual experiences that we can share. Just because uh, I have done something or have not done something does not mean that I can or can't contribute to a conversation. Uh, and diversity and inclusion can only continue to make that thing greater than what it is on its own. I've always been me, so I can't necessarily put myself in someone else's shoes unless I make an effort to understand and know who they are, what their plight might be, what their background is, and why they're making the decisions that they are making. When I talk about um, leadership to my subordinate leaders uh, as a company commander, I talk about you know three things uh, as, as a philosophy that I've held on to for quite a long time, but uh, in order to establish good relationships and good units, having confidence, competence, and consistency is extremely important. The confidence that we grow is in each other and in ourselves by learning our trade, but by sharing in each other, uh, in each other's hardships, and then learning each other, uh, and, and having that empathy, being in that thing with somebody, not necessarily the sympathy, uh, which is a little bit of a different thing. And then the confidence piece comes, the or the competence piece comes from working together, learning shared knowledge, understanding one another, and then the consistency is consistently carrying out that job, no matter what obstacle comes into uh, in in the way. So accomplishing the mission, and, and bringing people with you forward to do that. What advice would you give to future company commanders? The advice I would give to future company commanders is that when you realize that the whole team has to succeed together and that not everything relies on you solely, the company commander, then you can finally kind of let go of that unrealistic expectation that you have to be uh, the only leader from the front, uh, the only person that has the right answer. And honestly, it takes a huge load off of and puts huge faith and confidence in your subordinates to be able to lead with you. So I think that my biggest point uh, of advice uh, for, for anyone taking a new command or a different command uh, would be to uh, really know and, and learn your organization, learn individuals their strengths so that you can continue to uh, not only build on your own strengths, uh, but balance them with the other individual's strengths so that that organization can truly take on ownership of what the mission is. Um, I think that no matter what unit you have, personalities will always be different, but there's always the thing that keeps them together, which is the mission and accomplishment of the mission. And when you realize that that thing is greater than any one person's agenda, uh, then, then there can only be success in that.